It turns out that that's close. It's a good approximation when we're talking about things that are moving not super fast. But it isn't quite right when you get up to things moving very fast. Einstein predicted this, and our experiments since then have verified it amply, that in fact the quantity of interest, which we call momentum, is not just mass times velocity. It has another factor in there. Momentum is a vector, so momentum. And it's defined as the mass of an object times its velocity times a factor which is Greek lowercase gamma. Third letter of the Greek alphabet. What is gamma? Gamma has the following form. It is, I'll write it up here so we can see it and then I'll record it over there. Gamma is defined as 1 over the square root of the quantity 1 minus the ratio of the speed to the speed of light quantity squared. So 1 over 1 minus speed over speed of light squared, where the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So we're now in a situation where we have an equation that mostly looks sort of ordinary and easy to understand, it has, except it's got a kind of complicated looking part. And so we have to figure out what this part does. And what gamma does is affect changes in momentum when objects are going very fast. This is not all that unusual. Lots of things actually do go near the speed of light. Some particles zooming down from the top of the atmosphere are going nearly the speed of light. Um, so let's take a look at gamma and think about what its possible values might be. First of all, how does the direction of momentum compare to the direction of the object's velocity? Here's another view. It's the same, isn't it? Okay, because here's a vector, here's a vector. This is a scalar, positive scalar. Gamma is a scalar, so it can't change direction. Let's see what, what values gamma can have. Let's see how big it can get and how small it can get. So we've got 1 minus something or other squared here. So we'll consider some extremes. Suppose the something or other is 0. That means that this is 0, so that object's sitting still. Speed is 0. What do we get here? Well, then we have 1 over the square root of 1. OK, so it looks like gamma is 1. What if something's going not very fast? OK, so let's say that the speed is, we're going to use magnitudes here just to make our lives simpler for a minute. So let's say. Uh, Something's going 30 meters a second. So what do we have? We have 3 times 10 to the 1 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8th squared. So that's 1 over the square root of 1 minus, this is going to be 10 to the negative 7 squared, which is 10 to the negative 14th. What's, what's 1 minus 10 to the minus 14th? It's 1, isn't it? <laughs> so something going 30 meters per second, gamma is approximately 1. So for things moving slowly, the approximation that this quantity is 1 
is just fine. And we'll see that slowly can be pretty fast. Well, let's see what would, it, what would happen if the object of interest was actually moving at the speed of light. So let's suppose this is now speed equals the speed of light. So V over C is 1. So that's a 1. Looks like we've got a 1 over 0. That's infinity, isn't it? So that's really big. doesn't seem to be an upper limit. Now, this is one indication that we can't get to the speed of light. So let's take an example and see where it actually matters. Let's see, let's consider an object that weighs five kilograms. And we'll consider its momentum. And then what happens to its momentum if we double its speed? Just to see. So let's make a table. Here's the mass of our object. Here's its speed. Here's the value of gamma. And here is the magnitude of its momentum. So it's going, it's five kilograms. Let's say it's going, well, we did 30 meters per, 30 meters per second. We decided gamma was approximately one. And so the momentum of the object is one times five kilograms times 30 meters per second, the magnitude of the momentum. 5 times 3, so it looks like 150 the units seem to be kilogram meters per second. OK, let's double the speed, 60 meters per second. Since we had 1 minus 10 to the minus 14th, this is still going to be approximately 1. So this is going to be 1 times 5 kilograms times 60 meters per second, 300 kilogram meters per second. That's a factor of 2. On the other hand, if this 5 kilogram object was going at a speed of 0.49 times the speed of light, so a little under half the speed of light, this is about 1.47 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. If we work out the value of gamma by plugging 0.49 times C over C in here, and you have some homework that's going to ask you to do things like this, we find that the value of gamma is actually now 1.47. And so the momentum of the object, the magnitude of the momentum, is about 8 point quiz time. But we'll take another minute and finish this. OK, so that is 8.43 times 10 to the 8 kilogram meters per second. Now suppose we double it, so it's going 0.98 times the speed of light, which doubles the speed, so the speed is now 2.94 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Because this is squared in here, the value of gamma actually comes out to be 5.03 approximately. And so the actual momentum is 78.87 times 10 to the 8th kilogram meters per second. This is not a factor of 2. This is, this is a factor of 2, but this is a factor of more than 9. So at high speeds, when you double the velocity, double the speed, you more than double the momentum. And that that comes out experimentally. It just takes a lot more effort to stop an object that's, that's traveling with that momentum. So 
It matters in the everyday world. 